Hey everybody, here's uh, my video review of the Alcatel One Touch watch. Um, this is more of a budget smartwatch that's out on the market right now, but uh, if you don't feel like dropping a minimum of $350 for the Apple Watch, or uh, if you're like me and you're an iOS user, uh, which kind of leaves you screwed, this is the only watch you can really get aside from the Pebbles, but um, as you'll see, this actually does a lot more than the Pebbles do, and it's uh, less money. At least if you're t talking about the steel or the time. The regular Pebble, I think, is about 99 bucks now. But um, in my opinion, for what I use it for, uh, this blows everything else out of the water in terms of uh, price and usability. And uh, I'm really happy I got this. Um, and I've seen a lot of videos out there that are up on YouTube right now and they're all from tech blogs and stuff like that but uh, I actually pre-ordered this right when it came out and so um, I know they are shipping them right now I know if you order them right now though I think you're still gonna get on the uh, back orders for for a while but um, this is a great watch battery life on this thing is is awesome full color screen uh, great fitness tracker I mean if you're like me, one of the things I really wanted in, in a smartwatch was great fitness tracking and ultimately why I was considering going with the Apple Watch. Um, but when it came down to it, the Apple Watch, you know, price-wise for what it gives you uh, and just that battery life, only a day, just was a total deal breaker for me. So I, I decided to go with this one. So let's take a look and I'll show you what's going on with this thing. Alright, doing our unboxing now. Let's get this nice, you know, little packaging for it. Inside, uh, you're going to have the watch and it will have this uh, <clears throat> little holder on it, which I'll go ahead and take off now since we're going to be showing some other stuff. And a little sticker covering the front of the screen. <clears throat> Uh, inside the box uh, are going to be different little manuals uh, in different languages. But you know what? You don't need these because this thing is so easy to use. You will seriously be up and running in 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes. Alright, so let's start with the actual. I'll let this thing go back in there. There we go. So the watch itself. Um, really nice. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, do a quick, there we go, just buff off the screen there so it looks even super nice. Um, this thing looks really nice. Um, aside from, you can see there's these little marks that they've put on there along with a 12 and a 6. Uh, it would have been nice if the thing was completely uh, uh, blank. Um, so you just had a clear watch face, but uh, it's not the end of the world. And uh, for some people, you know, for it to actually look like a watch, that's probably why they did it. But uh, yeah, it's it's not it's not too bad. So like a traditional watch, you've got this kind of uh, hook and loop strap, whatever you want to call it, design here. Um, this little guy on the end here gets pretty difficult to move around when you're um, taking it on and off, which I do every day because I don't trust taking this in the shower, even though it is water resistant. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're up for it, go for it. Um, the really nice thing about this, and something I was a little hesitant at first, is this built-in charging strap that this has, which is really cool. Um, at the end of this just pops right off, and you've got a full-blown working USB 2.0 connector right here. Um, and you can plug this into any computer, any smartphone charger, if it's got a USB, uh, you're good to go. thing takes one hour to charge. That's it. If you can put it somewhere for an hour, it'll be fully charged. And uh, battery on this is probably it's one of its better selling points. 
three days, I would say with uh, average average use, you get a full three days out of it. Minimal use, probably closer to four. Um, if you're looking at it every day, I mean, if you're looking at it like every hour or two or three times an hour, you probably get closer to two, two and a half, but still. Uh, this blows the Apple Watch out of the water in terms of battery life. Um, and because of that, it allows you to do some, some cool stuff like sleep tracking that the uh, Apple Watch doesn't do. So, anyway, um, I'll show you right now the two ways that you get the watch to wake up. I'm going to put it on, on for a minute here, and you'll see. Uh, to turn it on, just hold the button down here on the right side. There is only one button, hence why it's called a one-touch watch, probably. And I'm just going to do that. And boom, there you go. You got your, uh, your watch going. Um, it will wake up two different ways. The screen will stay on for roughly 10 seconds each time. If you have your uh, hand down and you go like this, there it goes, it turns right on. Also, if you're doing something on it and it turns off, you can just simply tap the side button there and uh, it'll turn on for you. And it works really well. I know some, uh, some watches that do that, some fitness trackers, uh, don't necessarily like to react when you do the wrist flip thing like that, but uh, this one does. Okay, so for the rest of this video, I'm going to put this guy on a little stand. And go ahead and put it right there. And let's get nice and close here so you guys get a good view of everything that's going on. All right. So the first area where this watch falls a little short of the competition is in its customization options. So you get three watch faces, and that's it. However, you can customize the background to anything you want, so it does give you a personalization kind of feature to it. Uh, but yeah, a little limited in the watch faces, and uh, I'll show you what those are right now. Right now, it's set to the classic, which is the default. And uh, on the classic, you're going to have these little extensions of the marks on the outside, which I didn't really like at first, but I, I got used to it. Uh, you got your hour and minute hands, and you got your date, and your uh, icons up there showing your notifications and a few other things. Um, those will show up on all three of the watch faces, but just to show you what they are, you can go here. This is it. This is the OS on the watch and you can see I can go through it in like three swipes so not a lot of options available if you wanna you know add tons of apps onto this you, you can't I mean it's a proprietary OS um, hopefully Alcatel does put some you know additional functionality in it down the road but for now uh, I'm happy with it and it does what I need it to do so I'm going to tap on the watch face app and you can actually see the three different uh, faces that are available. You have the classic again and this is the minimal. Just tap it and it will show you what it looks like. Um, just basically has the hour hand and the minute hand but you get the really nice view of whatever your uh, background is. Pretty cool. Uh, we'll tap on that again, go back here and we'll head over to the um, digital one. So it's going to show you the time digitally and then you'll also have these dots if you could see them around the screen that will um, simulate the second hands. So that's kind of cool. You also do get the um, uh, date on there as well. But I'm more of a fan of the Classic one, and you'll see also as soon as you do that, anytime you turn it on for a very split second, you'll see the battery show up at the top to give you an idea where you're at. So, watch faces could use a little more. Uh, so again, I'm I'm waking up here, and then tapping on the screen takes you to the menu, 
But then you also have the flat tire button down here at the bottom, which works as the back button. Um, so again, navigation on this thing, super easy. You don't even need a book to do it. Um, but let's go through all the different options on here. So we'll start with the weather. And it's pretty basic. It will give you the actual temperature and it will uh, give you highs and lows. You can scroll left and right to get your uh, forecast for the next few days. It's basic. gets the job done. We'll go ahead and hit the back button here. Then we'll get to the main thing that I really like about this watch, and that's the fitness tracking on it. Um, starting here on the first screen, you've got what's it's basically an overview of your goals. So you'll set all your goals for each of the different um, uh, different tracking methods, and uh, it will kind of compile them all together to tell you where you're at for the day. Obviously, I'm not doing too too well on that front, but we'll move over here, and you've got your uh, step counter. And one thing you'll see with this ring, I love this ring. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's very Apple-esque in a sense. Um, and uh, really gives you a nice visual as to where you're at for your for your goals. Um, oh, there, I've actually got a uh, calendar notification coming through right now, so you can actually see that. And I'll just go ahead and... It's a, this doesn't work as well. Sometimes you got to be a little bit forceful with it. Um, that's right, because it's uh, midnight right now, so that's why I'm getting all this stuff. You'll see, so actually my um, steps just got completely reset, so that's wonderful. <laughs> um, so if you, if you saw it, if you want to scroll back a, a few, um, you know, 30 seconds or so, um, one of the things you'll also see at the bottom is a visual of your, um, steps you know if you have a lot of them at a certain point you can actually see an, an overview of the day so if I scroll to the right I've got my calorie tracking and I've got my distance um, this is uh, movement technically not really a workout but just to see you know make sure you're actually moving around throughout the day uh, and then you've got your sleep tracking the one downside I'd say about sleep tracking it's not automatic you do have to start and stop it in the morning and uh, I tend to forget a lot of times to start it or I tend to forget to stop it in the morning so it doesn't really work in that regard for me but uh, I'm getting better with it I'm just so used to having you know different fitness uh, trackers like the Jawbone and the Misfit and stuff like that that uh, did this tracking automatically anyway it's a small small gripe nothing nothing to yeah, worry about. And so that's going to cover everything in the fitness uh, app. There's the heart rate um, monitor, which works okay. Uh, I, it definitely, you know, it's nothing that could replace a real heart rate monitor. But um, as long as you're not doing anything, like if you're just taking a, a reading at that moment, you do have to sit relatively still, so trying to do it while you're running or something, probably not going to work out too well. Um, although in the workout app, which uh, is coming up here, supposedly it's it takes your reading every five minutes or something like that while it's doing that. Uh, so anyway, um, but I just did it a little while ago and it got, gave me 72, which sounds about right. So we'll go back. Here's the workout app. So you simply just hit play and then stop when you're done. Uh, and that'll sync up with the app and I'll show you the app in a little bit too. Over on the next screen here, you've got a, uh, stopwatch, which you can just do that and then, uh, either keep going or just reset it. No laps. So that's one downside about the stopwatch, but yeah, if you really want to do that, use your phone. This is something I really like. Uh, having a built-in music controller on your watch is uh, pretty nice. It will only work, from my knowledge, with the built-in music app. Uh, if you're an iPhone user uh, and you use like Spotify or Pandora or anything like that, uh, it's not going to work with that, but it will work with the built-in music player. 
and it does give you the forward, backward, uh, next track, previous track, um, play and pause, and this ring around the outside is the volume. And it works really well, especially if you're going to be doing, if you're running or you're working out and you don't want to have to like, you know, reach over and grab your shoulder strap or your shoulder holder or whatever you want to call that thing, uh, your armband, there you go, uh, and have to try to adjust things on there. Uh, it works really well to just be able to do it on the watch. So that's a nice feature to have. And uh, over here you got the camera app, which on for some reason mine doesn't want to work. Uh, which is fine because I don't really see a real benefit to having that. Other than, uh, you know, if you're, if you're standing in a picture and it's like, you're going to be tapping your watch. Because that's what it's going to take a picture at. So... I don't really see the benefit of that, but you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, there's a compass, which is uh, going to ask me to calibrate it because I haven't done it yet. Uh, and then over here, we got the watch face app, so you can choose between the three faces. Right below that, kind of a really cool feature to have. Um, I'm going to grab my phone for this one so you can see what happens. And uh, so I got my phone sitting right here next to this. And if I tap on this guy, oh, maybe, maybe not. Ah, uh, well, it's supposed to buzz, but you can see what showed up. It said move, found you. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do this again. See if it'll work this time. Huh, that's interesting. Usually, the, it'll play a uh, little jingle or something here on the phone. I'm not sure why it's not doing it. I did it earlier when I tried it. Let's see. One more time. Hey, there it goes. And if you look at the top there, if my thing will focus, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I guess not. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, kind of nice as long as you're in Bluetooth range. So if your phone is somewhere within about 30 or 50 feet or something like that of the watch, um, it will make a noise. So if you ever lose it in your bedroom or something, just tap your watch, tell it to find it, and you're good to go. Uh, over here on the last four, you have on the top there, top left is vibration. You can turn it on or off uh, with a little indicator there. And uh, right below it, you got airplane mode. And uh, the last two are just uh, to control the brightness. So you have two, you have three levels of brightness control. And then you have like an inversion or day night kind of uh, control there. And that's really it. That's all the stuff that's on the watch. <clears throat> and again, it's it's a little limited, but it's also really simple. And I believe that's what Alcatel was going for with this. So in that regard, I mean, they they knocked it out of the park, you know, in terms of the apps and stuff. Um, those of you that want to be able to add a lot of different apps and to be able to customize this thing to your heart's content, uh, this might not be the watch for you then, but. Uh, if you just want, like for me, my whole goal was to do fitness tracking. And uh, I was actually going to pick up the Fitbit Charge HR, which is, I think, about the same price as this. So, I mean, for the same amount of money, I'm going to pick this over the, the Fitbit. And the fitness tracking works really well. So, uh, I don't know why I would have got the, uh, the Charge, actually. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the watch, and uh, let's switch over here and take a look at the app. So, I'm going to zoom this back out a bit here. Mm, we'll come a little closer. Alright. 
so the dashboard um, basically just mimics what you see on the watch. Uh, gives you a little bit more information. I will try to actually hold this up. Maybe that will be better. And we'll zoom out just a little bit. Okay, cool. So uh, first off is your uh, on your steps. You'll actually see that right now it hasn't resynced up with the um, with the watch. Um, it will usually do it. Um, I think that there is a little delay. It usually does it every about 15 minutes, but if you prompt it to, it will sync. Um, let's just see if we can. It says just now, so... Oh, that's why. I'm on yesterday, so... Which is good, because I can actually show you that, as opposed to on the watch, which just shows today. So for the sake of this, it's still, you know, before midnight. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, over here you've got the uh, little bit more in detail of the fitness tracking. If you click on the middle there, you'll see a graph that shows you representation of your uh, steps. Um, where you're walking or where you're running. The running is a little sketchy. Um, I don't really recall running during most of those times, but if you're doing like a brisk walk, it's going to think you're running, so. You can go back, and then all the other, uh, you know, aspects of the fitness tracking are up here too. So you got your calories, you got your distance, uh, your, your movement, and then your sleep tracking. Um, all of the other ones, with the exception of the sleep tracking, will show you based on your uh, walking or running and uh, on the sleep one it will show you your light and deep sleep on the graph and you can go back and look for you know a few days at a time and and see how it's looking if you click on the right here you can do it by day uh, week month or year so that's kinda nice you can go back and see how you've been doing over the last month or something like that uh, and for example, if I go here and I click here and I say, nope, go back one, go. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm not sure why I can't pull it up on there, but it does work, trust me. Actually, if you do that and then click there, that's what it is day, month, so. So, yeah, over the last month I've done. Uh, you know, 13,000 steps and I can go back this month and I can go to May and see how many I've done for there too. Oops, sorry, I didn't know this slipped out of the frame for a minute. <clears throat> so then um, you have a timeline which is really cool too. You can actually see everything you know just as long as you want to go back. Uh, uh, will actually tell you when you're walking how long you walked and how far you walked so uh, or running you know in that regard and then when you take your heart rate um, it knows all that too sleep will actually break things down to show you your light your deep and how long you were awake for under the me option you have your profile you have your goals uh, which, as you can see, for today are not reflecting anything, but this is where you go to adjust it. So if I wanted to go there, I could say, eh, maybe I don't move. Maybe I'm not moving enough, so I'm going to go up a bit. You know, you can do that. You'll see it does say recommended, and that's based on your, I think, the height and weight that you put into the app when you do it. And uh, so I'll go back here. And you have synchronization which you can set to be every 15 minutes or uh, just manually. Anytime you um, open the app, it will sync it. The other option is to use Wi-Fi only. So if you're one of those people that doesn't have a ton of data on your cell phone, uh, it's nice that you can select that so that you don't get um, unnecessary data charges. You can rate, you can help, uh, and that's pretty much it. And uh, then you have the watch uh, tab, and you can set alarms, and you've got uh, 
three. I've got three alarms, but you can put as many of them on here as you want, really. Uh, here's where you can go to customize the wallpaper. So again, you can see the watch faces. Whoops. And uh, change the wallpaper. So there are different ones that are predefined, and if you click on them, they'll actually show you what they're going to look like, you know, on the three different watch faces. You can do those. You can do just flat, uh, straight colors. And uh, then you have your custom, which you could use just a picture on your phone, or you could take a picture and use that. So like I said, the background can be completely just about anything you want, which is really nice. Uh, then you have the notifications. And on notifications, you can see these are what will show up on the watch. So you have incoming call, missed calls, messages, email, Facebook, Facebook Messenger, and LinkedIn. Now that's a little little limited. Another, you know, area of the phone that could use a little bit of uh sorry, little the watch. It's getting late. Uh that could use a little bit more uh options. And I'm sure later on um Alcatel's gonna uh include more more functionality in that respect hopefully but since we're on the subject of notifications let's actually go back to the watch for a second and I'll show you how that works let's go back here close again so I'm gonna do this now I just swipe up from the bottom and uh, right there I can see I've got a missed call it does say I've got, uh, what, three? So if I go up, it says I missed another call. And I scroll up again, and it shows I have a voicemail. So you can see that whatever I have from a contact will show their name uh, here. But if it's just a number, it will show up as the number. And they've left me a voicemail. I can swipe over to the right. And I've got a text message here. Uh, and then I can swipe over to the right and I've got a comment on Facebook. Now if I got a messenger, somebody messaged me on Facebook, that would show up just like a um, text message would. So, the only thing I'm going to say about the notifications that I don't like, and this isn't how it originally was, so Alcatel did some sort of change update to their system, but what will happen is if I get those notifications the watch will continue to buzz every couple minutes until I go on my phone and acknowledge that I've received that notification. So for example, if I get a text message uh, and I don't go look at it on the phone, um, the watch will kind of buzz every couple minutes. At least it hasn't been doing it now, so maybe it's not. I don't know. But uh, that text message that I just got, you can see, I'm going to go ahead and put it right there, but as soon as I go to look at it, it disappears. So it happens instantaneously, and that's that's kind of nice. So anyway, that's uh, that's how the notifications work. Um, and again, I mean, I don't feel the need to sit there and have to use like Siri or something to talk into my watch to reply to people. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to pull out my phone. Um, I do have it set up right now so that I can show you what happens when you get a call. So I'm going to call from my house phone here. And we should get a notification on the phone. So I'm getting the call right now, and I can actually just go ahead and swipe this to the, to the right. And uh, there you go. I can actually... Uh, reject the calls from the watch which is really nice so if I'm you know in the middle of something and I can't take a call at the moment um, you know I can just swipe to the right done if it's somebody I don't want to talk to same deal so yeah um, this is a great watch um, battery life on this thing is awesome you know three days on uh, on average four days if you uh, don't really use it too much I'd say if you're checking it once every, you know, once or twice an hour, maybe even a little more than that, then you'd probably get down to about two, two and a half days. Um, but yeah, for what for what's out there right now in the market, um, you know, you can't really beat it for this price, especially if you're an iOS user and you're kind of stuck with the uh, the options of just going with the Apple Watch or uh, the Pebbles. Um, Pebbles are nice, uh, especially that new, the new one they've got, the... Uh, 
Pebble Time, I think it's called. Um, but, you know, they don't really do the fitness tracking too well. It's based on a third-party app, and uh, this thing's got the full, you know, gyroscope, accelerometer, the whole nine yards in it. Um, and again, I mean, as a fitness tracker, this thing is pretty awesome. So if you're looking at that aspect of it, it's great. All the other little features it has with, uh, you know, music player and uh, stopwatch, you know, checking your workouts, all that kind of stuff. Just a nice little bonus to have on top of it. And the notifications. I mean, it works great for what, what you mainly needed to do. Um, if you're one of those people, though, that, you know, wants to have your phone basically on your hand, on your wrist, then, uh, you know, this isn't going to do it for you. But, um, again, I think Alcatel is going with simplicity with this watch and ease of use. And with that, they completely knocked it out of the park. And... Uh, it's a great watch, so if you're, you know, thinking about picking up an Apple Watch, or if you're looking at picking up a Pebble, um, definitely keep this one in mind, too. It's, it's pretty decent, and, you know, the nice color LCD on it, I mean, I could go over everything I just talked about in the video, but, um, and that, that charging in the band is awesome. I mean, and it only takes an hour to charge, and anywhere you got a USB, you're golden. You got a computer by you, you can charge it. Uh, somebody's got a, uh, a phone charger laying by that's a USB on it, you know, you're set. You don't need to carry a cable around with it. And um, you can do sleep tracking with it, which you can't do on the Apple Watch. So, anyway, hope that uh, helps you guys out. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, post them below here and uh, I'll do my best to, uh, to help you out. And thanks for watching.